Hey folks, Corey here with Fist of Stone Wargaming. Welcome back to the Stone Path. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted up a couple of rogue psychers from Blackstone Fortress using primarily Citadel contrast paints and then picking out a few details to really make them stand out. Here are the seven paints I'll be using for this first step. Pretty much in order here from left to right, with the one exception that I have the Nasdrag Yellow and the Wildwood flipped. Undercoated the minis with the Wraithbone Spray. So let's grab the Gilliman Flesh and get right into it. As the name of the paint indicates, I'm going to use this right on the flesh colors. Now for these models, that's going to be the hands and the feet. We're also going to use it on the head. I'm going to combine it a little bit with Apothecary White. This is going to be a really easy blend on the model that's going to give a darker tone to a lighter tone, which kind of matches the image on GW's website. The first step here is to really just paint on some Gilliman flesh. I'm going to have the darker part be the lower part towards the neck, and the brighter part be the top of the head. Once you get some Gilliman flesh on, go in with some Apothecary White over the top, and begin just mixing the paint together right on the model. Go back and forth a little bit, Add a little bit more if you need to. Uh, I didn't have to in this case. Just make sure if you do go reach into another pot that you clean your brush off first. And you get this kind of a result. Moving on to the next step now. Basiliconum Gray. This is going to be for the pants. And in this case, since I'm using these lighter colors and these colors first, don't have to be as neat as you would when you're using the later darker colors. You see here, painting right over the pants and over the shackles that are holding this guy down. We'll paint over those shackles later with a darker color, but right now, don't worry about being so neat. Don't have to be. It's also a pretty good idea to reach up underneath and make sure you get the back side of the pants up under the model. Figured I would take a minute to show you a couple of mistakes that I made here. The Gilliman flesh was just too strong here on the front and back of this mini when I was being a little rough when I was applying the flesh. So, very quickly, going to show you how to use Wraithbone here, the base paint, to just give a nice thin coat over these locations and then come back in with the color, in this case, Basiliconum Gray, that you need. Thin this out with a little bit of water, apply it to the locations that you want to correct. And then come back in when the wraith bone is dried with the paint you're using for this part of the model. In this case, Basiliconum Gray. There you go. What mistake? Moving on to Flesh Terror's Red here. This contrast paint is very vibrant. The red contrast paints, this one in Blood Angel's Red, have a lot of pigmentation. So just be careful when you're using them. Going to go under the coat and the cuffs and the collar. Be careful. Moving around the head, I've switched to a smaller brush for around the head here just to make sure that I don't get anything on the head of the model that we just worked on. I did a little bit of that blending on. Don't worry about getting over the coat though. That'll cover over with black in the future because that's what we're going to hit the coat with later on. I also went back. I missed a step here, which is why a little bit out of order, but I went back and put some of this Flesh Terror's Red on the little tentacle this one particular model has. Jumping back in order, now on to the Nasdrag Yellow. Because I'm doing this for a contrast look, this is going to be on anything that we want to be gold or some kind of a yellowish metal. So in this case, I decided to pick out um, this particular ball and chain type thing on the bottom. Uh, the Chaos Beast symbol on his belt buckle. And then some of the details on the gun holster. We've got the skull and the little relief detail. And then on the edge of the coat, you see the little trim. We'll paint that in this yellow color as well. And then, of course, the big chaos star. If you're planning on taking the further steps later on in this video, I'd actually recommend you paint these in the wildwood brown as opposed to the yellow. The yellow is too bright and requires two coats of the gold metallics later on. Next step here is to get into the browns with wildwood. Going to use this for the furs.
and also for anything that we want to make into a leather detail. So that's going to include things such as the belt and the gun holster. Starting to get into darker paints now, so be very careful working around the detail that you just finished. Otherwise, you'll be going back and forth with that, fixing those mistakes constantly. Again, if you need to, switch to a smaller brush. And then finally, last contrast paint, Black Templar. This paint's a very strong paint. Be careful when you're moving around, but pretty much everything that's left on the model now that's white, we're going to make black. It's going to be the ball and chain, the weights, the coat, the armor, the shackles, and the handle for his staff or wand. Take your time here. Don't want to get this on any of the other parts of the model. The other thing that you can do here with this paint is clean up any of the mistakes that you've made before. Make sure you've got nice crisp edges between the, the paints. Um, you can see I'm doing that here with this particular edge of the coat. Almost kind of using an edge highlighting technique here by using the side of the brush and going right down the edge of the coat here to just clean up that edge where the red and the black meet. This is probably the longest step because it's got the most model to cover. When it was dry, I wasn't really happy with the way the coat came out because it's really flat. It's kind of a problem with these contrast paints. It doesn't do well on flat areas, but the solution there is to come in with a second coat to give it a nice smooth finish. I did not do it above the waist, just the lower flowing areas. And here's a look at how they are now with just these seven contrast paints done. If you're good with this, you could base them up right here, but going to take a few extra minutes, pick out a few extra details, or really make these models shine on the tabletop. So here are the paints I'm going to be using for applying these extra details. I'm going to use the Death Claw and Bane Ray brown colors for the furs. I'm going to use Rune Fang Steel with a shade of Null Oil for the silver metallics. Necron Compound is a dry brush over all of the metallics to kind of give them a worn and tarnished look. Balthasar Gold with Agrax Earthshade for the gold metallics. And then for a few other particular details, I'm going to use some Caraberg Crimson, Griff Charger Gray, and Wraithbone. So the first easy step here is to come in with the Deathclaw Brown. I'm going to paint this on the underside of the fur. Both models have this. Because I painted this in the brown contrast paint, I'm going to take two coats. That's all you really need to get a nice even coverage, and it looks like the skin tone underneath a fur. Right behind that, we'll come in with the Bane Blade Brown and use this as a dry brush technique for the top of the fur. Just run the brush right over it lightly after you've gotten most of the paint off, and it will really pick out the highlight of the top of the fur. Once the furs are done, we're going to move into the metallics. Any place that you want silver now, now's the time to pick it out. So I'm going to pick out the shackles, the chains, the weights and the shaft of the staff or the wand that he's hanging on to. Once the silver is complete, I moved on to the Balthazar Gold. This will be covering over any of the areas we previously painted yellow, and anything we want gold. Again, I recommend that you do this in brown instead if you're planning to do this step. I had to do two coats here to make sure I got good even coverage over the yellow paint. Once the metallics have dried up, we'll get into shading them using the non oil over the silvers and the Agrax Earth shade over the golds. While I had the null oil out, I also, just to kind of differentiate it, threw some null oil onto the tentacle. Moving on to some of the other details now with the shades drying. I tried to use some Talisar Blue here uh, initially to give some kind of a look of uh, warp energy flowing around this guy's head, like what was showing on the art on GW's website. But it was really too bright for my liking. So Griff Charger Gray ended up being a better color to use. And I used that one instead, which is why I highlighted it in the beginning, and really toned this down and made it a real more subtle effect. 
In these cases, less is usually more. Once I got that effect done, I grabbed the wraith bone, pick out the eyes and the teeth. Try to be real, real steady here with your hands. Up next, Caribou Crimson. I use it on this particular model to kind of highlight or add a little bit of color to the face around this chaos symbol he's got on his forehead. And I also used it on the horn he's got sticking out of his head. For the horn on the head, I did multiple coats, each coat starting further up the horn. So the first coat went all the way down, second coat about three quarters of the way, next coat about halfway, last coat about a quarter of the way, and so on. So you get a progressive gradient working up from the head all the way to the tip of the horn. And if you want to get a little bit fancy here, you can clean your brush off, come in and kind of pull the color down as you go to get a smoother gradient. Once all that was done, grabbed the dry brush again, just a little bit of wraith bone and went very, very light over these the head and the hands of the model, just to kind of pick out a few high points and kind of blend together the detail work. And then really the last step, go over to the Necron compound and start running the dry brush right over all the metallics. This will be all your golds and all your silvers. It gives them a nice tarnished look, perfect for chaos models. Be careful on some of these wobbly parts otherwise you might have uh you might end up breaking something that you didn't intend to here's a look at these two models finished up these chaos guys have been a lot of fun to paint i'm, I'm an imperial fist player painting the yellow painting the space marines but had a lot of fun painting these chaos guys so hope you found something useful in this video if you like it please give it a like down below subscribe if you'd like to catch some more content thanks for watching We'll catch you in the next video.